Learn German Games. Nicht so schnell. Das verwende die Stäbe. Oh ja! Halt! Who are these people? I think they're just children in costumes. Wer seid ihr beiden? Ich bin die blinde Dawn. Und das ist die blinde Courtney. Hi. Notice how in German you make a break, you don't take a break. And break is Pause. Make sure you pronounce it in German with an O sound. Pause. Die Pause? The break, correct. Hello and welcome to LearnGermanGames.com, the only place where you learn German with games live. So if you're not watching this live, make sure to subscribe and click that bell button so you see whenever we go live again. This way you'll be able to chat live with us, ask questions and answer simple questions we might ask here. Now while we play, make sure to read the subtitles. German is in yellow and English is in blue. Knowing that, let's start. Well, last time we were talking to these two girls here. On the right, they're trying to sacrifice themselves to a monster called Mokchotra so that he doesn't attack the bullets, it's a bit crazy. And the protagonist we're playing here is actually trying to kill the monster. Why sacrifice yourself if you can just kill the monster, right? <laughs> if you want to know more about that story, make sure to click the playlist of Broken Age on the Learn German Games channel and watch the whole thing, it's pretty crazy. Uh, for now, let's just talk to the girls here. Wie steht's, Maiden? Hmm. Nice costumes. Nette Kostüme. Danke, unsere Väter haben sie gemacht. Sie sind die besten Fischer im Dorf und können ziemlich gute Köder bauen. Wir mussten jeden Haken im Dorf verwenden, aber das war's wert. Nette Kostüme. Nice costumes. We have an E here at the end of net, that means nice, because costume is plural in this case. Normally, a das kostüm, costume is neuter, that's why you see it in orange, also das kostüm. Danke, unsere Väter haben sie gemacht. Thank you, our fathers made them. So, sie here is referring to the plural of costumes. That's what you use if you want to refer to something that's plural. So this is the equivalent of them. Unsere Fährte haben sie gemacht. Sie sind die besten Fische im Dorf und können ziemlich gute Köder bauen. They are the best fishermen in the village and they can build quite good baits. Der Fischer sounds quite familiar as a fisherman. Und das Dorf is a village. Köder is probably new for you, means bait. So if you're a bit confused about that uh, sentence, this is because the, of the craziness of this game. So these girls are trying to become baits for fish themselves. This is why you can see on the uh, top hat here, this girl has a few hooks because she wants to be a bait herself. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, they want to be eaten and they're happy about it. Also Köder is masculine, but here again we can see an E at the end of the adjective Gute Köder, because Köder is plural in this case, and Köder is one of these words in German that has the same form in plural and singular, and the way you're able to distinguish the two is first of all obviously from context, but also from these small grammatical indications, like an E at the end of an adjective tells you that this is plural. Bauen means to build. Wir mussten jeden Haken im Dorf verwenden, aber das war es wert. So we just talked about hooks, and now we see the German word for hook. Der Haken. You can see here in the picture that a Haken has two meanings. It could be a literal hook. On the left you see the picture, and on the right it could be a check mark. Yeah, Haken. So it's a very useful word, even though you see it here in a fisherman kind of context. In daily life, it's also used as a check mark. Wir mussten, there is a T here for mussten, because this is the past tense. So we had to, every hook in the village, verwenden. This is the standard way to say to use, verwenden. 
remember to pronounce the V like an F and the W like a V. It could be a bit confusing in the beginning, but you get used to it, it becomes part of you. The more you repeat it, the easier it gets. So we had to use every hook in the village, but it was worth it. Das war es wert. You can remember this as a chunk to mean that something was worth it. Um. Wird niemand diese Haken vermissen? Nicht so sehr, wie sie uns vermissen werden. Aber oh Mädchen, du bringst mich noch zum Wein. Die Armen. Wird niemand diese Haken vermissen? Will no one miss these hooks? Vermissen is to miss. Nicht so sehr, wie sie uns vermissen werden. Not as much as they will miss us. Notice how the will is at the end of the sentence. Ach Mädchen, du bringst mich noch zum Weinen. Schnüff. Oh girl, you're gonna make me cry. Sniff. Literally, you are bringing me still to the... Weinen is actually a verb, but here it's used as a noun. So whenever you change a verb to a noun, you capitalize the first letter and then you add the definite article, in this case, dem, zu dem. Here, zum is short for zu dem. So you are bringing me to the crying. Hey Maiden, ich werde es Mok Chopra zeigen. <laughs> Nicht annähernd so sehr, wie ich es ihm zeigen werde. Mein Kostüm schlägt alles. Und ich stehe nur hier rum. Hey Maiden, ich werde es Mok Chotra zeigen. Hey Maidens, I'm going to show Mok Chotra. So this is the name of the monster we were talking about. And she's saying she's going to show him what she's made of. Zeigen is to show. Remember to pronounce the Z sound with a T in the beginning, then S. Yeah, like a snake. Zeigen. Ha! Nicht annähern so sehr, wie ich es ihm zeigen werde. Ha, not nearly as much as I'm going to show him. Annähernd is nearly. Make sure you add a slight pause between the two ends here, yeah? Annähernd. V means how, as in how much. So sehr V is like as much as. In this case, V in this context means as. Mein Kostüm schlägt alles und ich stehe nur hier rum. The main verb here is a separable verb. Rumstehen. You can see the end of it here. Rum und stehe. So my costume beats everything. Schlagen is the original form of this verb. And it means to beat or to fight in this context. My costume beats everything and I'm just standing here. Hey, kann ich etwas von dem Parfum abhaben? Das ist kein Parfum. Das ist eine Lockmischung aus eigener Entwicklung, auch bekannt als Bestienköder. Morgs fahren voll drauf ab. Hey, kann ich etwas von dem Parfum abhaben? That could be a new verb for everybody. Abhaben is to have some. So have a little bit of something is abhaben. Can I have some of that perfume? Kann ich etwas is some. Yeah, so a little bit of. Abhaben on its own also means to have some. Yeah, it's a bit of a repetitive meaning here. Das ist kein Parfum. This is not a perfume. Das ist eine Lochmischung aus eigener Entwicklung, auch bekannt als Bestienköder. So, bekannt means well known. Und die Entwicklung is development. It's feminine because it ends with U and G. And you can see the last word, they just invented this in the game. Bestien, as in a beast. Köder, we just took it a few minutes ago, which means bait. So this is a lure mixture. Lock is to lure. It comes from the verb locken, to lure somebody. Mischung sounds a bit like mixture. Yeah, die Mischung also feminine because it ends with U-N-G. From my own development. In German, you say out of my own development, aus eigener, also in self, development, Entwicklung, auch bekannt als Bestienköder, also known as beast bait. Mogs fahren voll drauf ab. Mogs is the kind of monsters 
they invented it for this game. So they go full on it, as in they're really into it. Kann ich ein bisschen was von deinem Bestienköder haben? Schon besser. Aber nein, kannst du nicht. <lacht> Tut mir leid. Es ist ihr Geheimrezept. Kann ich ein bisschen was von deinem Bestienköder haben? Can I have some of your beast bait? Kann ich ein bisschen was? This is also repetition. It's like saying a little bit, a little bit, because was here stands uh, for etwas. Yeah. Schon besser. Ah, oh, that's already better. Aber nein, kannst du nicht. Lach, as in she laughs. Tut mir leid. But no, you can't. Laughs. I'm sorry, kannst du nicht. Das ist ihr Geheimrezept. This is a her secret recipe. Actually, ihr can mean there, but in this context, you know that it's her. That's her secret recipe. Das Geheimrezept, literally Geheim, a secret, and Rezept is recipe. Wie wäre es mit nur einem klitzekleinen Spritzer? Ah, tut mir leid, wenn ich meiner besten Freundin Drusilla schon nichts abgebe, dann bekommst du bestimmt nichts. Ich sagte, ich will nichts davon. Ich verwende keine leistungssteigernden Mittel. Wie wäre es mit nur einem klitzekleinen Spritzer? So, klitzeklein is like itzy bitzy. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Und Spritzer is just a splash. How about just a teeny tiny itzy bitzy splash? Der Spritzer. It comes from the verb spritzen to spray. Tut mir leid, wenn ich meiner besten Freundin Drusilla schon nichts abgebe, dann bekommst du bestimmt nichts. Abgeben is the verb here. Abgeben, the difference between abgeben and geben, abgeben means to hand over. The up gives a feeling of something going away from the speaker. Sorry, if I don't give anything to my best friend Drusilla, then I'm sure you won't get anything. The common is to get. Here is conjugated with do. Dann bekommst du bestimmt. For sure, nothing. Pay attention to the ashes here. This is not nicht, this is nichts. Ich sagte, ich will nichts davon. I said I didn't want any of it. Just like we said in the beginning, the T here is for the past tense. Yeah. Ich sagte, I said, ich will, I want nothing of it or from it. Ich verwende keine leistungssteigenden Mittel. I do not use any performance enhancing agents. Also das Mittel is a means or in this case an agent. As in some kind of material, ja. Yeah. Und uh, leistungssteigend, performance enhancing. Performance is leistung. The S after it is like the apostrophe S of possessive. And steigen is to increase, ja. Yeah. Ich will beim Maidenmahl mitmachen. I want to join the Maiden's Feast. So this is what they're calling the uh, sacrificial festival. They're really uh, celebrating dying, these people. It's crazy. Uh, okay, let's uh, tell them that at the end and see what happens. Ich will beim Maidenmahl mitmachen. Aber natürlich, du armes Ding. Muschelmeiden müssen sich aber zuerst langen Eignungsprüfungen unterziehen. Außerdem, unsere Väter sind einflussreich. Außerdem, kann ich dir etwas sagen? Nur zwischen zwei Freundinnen. Oh mein Gott, ja! Nur zwischen zwei Freundinnen. Du riechst einfach nicht gut, Kleines. Oh, ich wünschte, ich hätte eine Freundin, die mir das sagen würde. Bis später, Meiden. Ciao! Aber natürlich, du armes Ding. But of course, you poor thing. Am um, is poor, but here it takes es because ding is noter. You can see it from the orange color here. Yeah. Muschelmeiden müssen sich aber zuerst langen Eignungsprüfungen unterziehen. Sich unterziehen is to undergo or undertake. You can see the dich here and then unterziehen. We saw this in the previous video. Hopefully you remember some of that. Uh, die Eignungsprüfung is an aptitude test. Also feminine because it ends with your MG. Shell maidens, so these are maidens coming from this village here. Yeah. However, 
aber must first undergo lengthy aptitude tests. The plural comes from the en here after the ung. Außerdem unsere Väter sind einflussreich. Besides, our fathers are influential. Also a word we saw last time, a bit of a review here, einflussreich. Influential. Make sure you keep your mouth open at the end of the CH here to sound authentic. Reich. Don't let your teeth touch. Außerdem kann ich dir etwas sagen. Nordzichen zwei Freundinnen. So make sure to stretch the dem here of außerdem. Besides, can I tell you something? Only between two girlfriends. So we can tell from her comments here that uh, they seem to be very friendly with each other, they're best friends. Which probably means uh, we should do something to uh, drive them apart. That's something that they can fight about so we can get a bit of that bait. Oh my god, ja, nur zwischen zwei Freundinnen. Oh my god, yes, just between two girlfriends. Du riechst einfach nicht gut, Kleines. You just don't smell good, little one. Riechen is to smell. Also keep your mouth open on the CH, yeah. Ja? Riechen. Och, ich wünschte, ich hätte eine Freundin, die mir das sagen würde. Oh, I wish I had a friend to tell me that. Bis später, Maiden. See you later, Maidens. Here again, it's one of these words that looks the same in singular and plural. But here, because there's no article before it at all, you know that she's talking about more than one. Ciao. Let's go up uh, these stairs here. Kannst du mich da oben hören? Ein sehender Fremder naht. Nicht so schnell. Ach, verflucht, kein heiliges Tränengas. Verwende die Stäbe. Oh ja, halt. Der blinde Gott sieht niemanden. Ein sehender Fremde naht. Der Fremde is a stranger. Und nahen is to be approaching. So this is a verb here, nahen. Ja, sehend is sighted as in seeing. It comes from the verb sehen. A seeing stranger approaches. The implication is that I guess they cannot see. We cannot see their eyes. Nicht so schnell. Not so fast. Verflucht. Kein heiliges Tränengas. Heilig is holy. Und das Tränengas is tear gas. This person is trying to shoot with this uh, weird looking gun that looks like a fish. Which I'm guessing shoots uh, tear gas. Holy tear gas. Excuse me. Verwende die Stäbe. Use the sticks or the staffs. Der Stab. And again, we see the verb here to use. Verwenden. Ja. Oh ja. Oh ja. Halt. Yeah, we go to Germany and you know North German, you will probably hear that a lot on the streets. A policeman will probably say that. Halt. Stop. That comes from the verb halten. To stop. Der blinde Gott sieht niemanden. The blind God sees no one. Notice the word God is masculine. This is why we have der. But the adjective only takes an E because we already know from der that the noun God is masculine. So we don't need to add it to the adjective. Whenever you have a definite article here and it's obvious uh, what the word is, we only have to add an e to the adjective, nothing more. In this case, God doesn't see anybody, so the direct object of the verb sehen is niemanden. This is why niemanden takes an en. So this is the accusative case here. Who are you two people? Wer seid ihr beiden? Ich bin die blinde Dawn. Und das ist die blinde Courtney. Hi. Natürlich. Wer seid ihr beiden? Who are you two? 
Here you is referring to the plural you. She's talking to more than one person. This is why she said Zaid ia. This is the conjugation of the verb to be whenever you're talking to more than one person. Biden is two. That sounds like President Biden, but this is what it means in German. Biden is uh, two. Both. Ich bin die blinde Dawn. I am the blind Dawn. Obviously, Dawn isn't a German word. This is just this person's name. Und das ist die blinde Courtney. And this is the blind Courtney. Was ist das für ein Ort? Die blinde Pyramide. Das Grab des blinden Gottes. Als ob du es nicht gewusst hättest. Was ist das für ein Ort? Der Ort is a place. What kind of place is that? So this is a special structure in German. Was ist das für ein means what kind of something. And you might be confused here why ein doesn't have einen because we all know that after für normally you have the accusative case. And this is because für isn't really part of the sentence here. This is a special kind of grammatical structure where add für in this kind of way to mean what kind of something. So the reason we say ein Ort is because we have actually here the nominative case because of the verb to be, sein, yeah? But when you add das für, it gives it the meaning what kind of. Die blinde Pyramide, the blind pyramid. Die Pyramide is feminine because it ends with an E and make sure to pronounce the Y like a soft U with umlaut. So pu and not P, yeah, or pi. Pyramide. The blind pyramid. Das Grab des blinden Gottes. You can see the genitive case here, which gives the meaning of possessive. So the grave. Das Grab. Open your mouth on the A. Of the blind God. The S at the end is also because of the genitive case. So the tomb or grave of the blind God. Als ob du es nicht gewusst hättest. As if you didn't know, literally, as whether you, it, here there's a missing E in spoken German, sometimes you drop a few letters. So, du es, nicht gewusst, knew, a had, conditional. Kann ich hineingehen? Du willst in unser Allerheiligstes eindringen? Warum? Kann ich hineingehen? Hineingehen means to go into. Can I go in? Du willst in unser Allerheiligstes eindringen? Du willst, you want, in our Holy of the Holies. Das Allerheiligstes, Holy of the Holies. <laughs> eindringen is to intrude. So you want to invade or intrude would be a more accurate translation here. Our holy of the holies, the most holy thing we have. Warum? Why? Because it's cold outside. <laughs> Weil es ziemlich kalt hier draußen ist? Die blinde Pyramide ist ausschließlich ein Zufluchtsort für den blinden Gott. Und für seine ergebenen Anhänger, wenn wir eine Pause einlegen. Doch niemand betritt die blinde Pyramide. Niemand! Es sei denn... Was? Nun, wenn sie das Rätsel von Jorn lösen könnte? Oh ja, wenn sie es lösen könnte, dann wäre sie auf jeden Fall würdig. Ach, kein Problem. Weil es ziemlich kalt hier draußen ist. Because it's pretty cold out here. Draußen is outside. Remember to pronounce that sound like a TS, ja, ziemlich. Pretty as in quite. Yeah, it doesn't literally mean pretty. So let's uh, translate it as quite or fairly or rather. Die blinde Pyramide ist ausschließlich ein Zufluchtsort für den blinden Gott. Ausschließlich is exclusive. Add a small pause here to help you remember it. Aus is out. Ja, schließlich. Ein Zufluchtsort, a refuge. As in uh, somewhere that you can escape to, yeah. The S here is a possessive S, and art means place, just like we took a few minutes ago. Für den blinden Gott, for the blind God. 
So the blind pyramid is exclusively a refuge for the blind God. Und für seine ergebenen Anhänger, wenn wir eine Pause einlegen. So you can see here how if you want to be a bit more formal and you want to say you want to take a break, you can say die Pause is a break and you the uh, verb here einlegen, which literally means to insert. Yeah, so think about it literally as to insert a break, which means to take a break. Yeah, und Anhänger is a supporter or a follower. Der Anhänger is a follower. And for his devoted followers, when we take a break, ergebenen is devoted. Doch niemand betritt die blinde Pyramide. But no one enters the blind pyramid. Betritt is the conjugation of the verb betreten, to enter. In this case, doch means but. Niemand, nobody, es sei denn, unless, remember these three words that together mean unless. Was, what? Nun, wenn sie das Rätsel von Jan lösen könnte. Now, or in this case, when you have known with a comma, it means more like, well, hmm, if she could solve the mystery of Jan. Das Rätsel is a mystery or a puzzle or a riddle. Ja, lösen is to solve. Because we have if here, then, the conjugated verb goes all the way to the end. This is why we have solve can. Oh ja, wenn sie es lösen könnte, dann wäre sie auf jeden Fall würdig. Würdig means worthy. Der Fall is a case. Auf jeden Fall. In any case. Oh yeah, if she could solve it, then she would definitely be worthy. So auf jeden Fall in this context means definitely. Pa, kein Problem. Pa, no problem. Hey, kann ich euch etwas bringen? Was denn? Noch ein bisschen heiliges Tränengas? Oh ja, yeah. hier. Schön. Sei doch bitte so nett und füll mir das auf. Danke. Okay, tschüss. Tschüss. Wir spüren uns später. Vielleicht nicht. Hey, kann ich euch etwas bringen? Hey, can I get you guys anything? You guys, because English doesn't have a plural you. Uh, so this is why she says euch, because it's more than one person. Was denn? What then? Noch ein bisschen heiliges Tränengas? A little more holy tear gas, literally still a bit holy. Oh ja, hier. Oh yes, here. Sei doch bitte so nett und füll mir das auf. Danke. The separable verb here is auffüllen. And it's also separable in English. It means to fill up. Sei is imperative, so she's telling her what to do. So be, please, so nice. As in, if you could be so kind, please be so kind. And fill this up for me. For me, in German, you just use the dative. Mia. Danke, thank you. Tschüss. Bye. Wir spüren uns später. Literally, we feel each other later. So the game's trying to be a bit funny here. But we're going to use the short sentences to remind everyone that whenever you have S that comes before a P, it's pronounced like SH. So this is why we say SPÜREN and SPÄTER. And that was our game for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like this video. And if you still have any questions, I'll be answering them in the comments below.